All of us in this room are in a very unique position. As you may have noticed by now, technology is evolving a bit faster than we are. Now, just imagine you're standing on the beach and the weather is great, the sea is calm, and every now and then there is a small wave approaching the shore. So the worst thing that could happen is that maybe your trouser gets a bit wet, and that's it. So this is pretty much what technology looks like that we have seen in the last 1,000 years. It could be refreshing, it could be disturbing, but you always had the choice just to step back if you didn't like what you saw. Now, this is changing. What we see now ahead of us is more like a tsunami. We're not talking about the small waves anymore. And if a tsunami is approaching, then of course the question is, what can I do to be prepared? There are a lot of technologies on the way, and I would just like to pick one example, which is the Internet of Things. Probably every one of you has heard about the Internet of Things and asked the question, what is it? The good thing is it's very easy to explain because everyone knows what a thing is, right? You have a thing on your body, which could be a smartwatch. You have things in your car, you have things in your home. Now just imagine that in every device where now you have electricity, you will also have a computer, you will have some sensors, and you will have a way so that all these things Connect, or connect and talk to each other. Not necessarily through the internet, but they can form their own networks. So this is the internet of things from a technical perspective. We could also see it from a more romantic view, maybe. Maybe some of you are aware of natural religions and you know cultures like Japanese, Icelandic, or Native American. And then you will know that in these cultures, there's this idea that in every tree, in every river, and every stone, there lives a spirit and you can talk to the spirit. Now imagine if this comes true to all of us, even for the non-believers. You wake up in this magical world, and you don't talk to the tree, but you talk to your fridge, which is maybe less romantic, but it will work. And the fridge will answer, and who knows, you know, one day you become good friends. So this is what the Internet of Things could look like. And um, I'll admit, this will take some time to get used to it. And for the next generation, it will be just there. In general, mankind is not too bad in adapting to new things, but still, it takes time. Let's go back 500,000 years ago. 500,000 years ago, scientists estimate this is the time when mankind managed to control fire. So now you could cook your own food. Great. If the, cook, if the food is cooked, it's smooth, so your jaw can become smaller. But unfortunately, the number of teeth didn't change. So 500,000 years later, you have a too small jaw with the same number of teeth, and you end up in a dental chair, and the dentist is removing your wisdom tooth, and it's all because of a 500,000 years old technology that you can blame. Now, there were other inventions made that were less painful. For example, 500 years ago, if you were born then, then you would have to wait about 50 years for the next significant invention, which would have been the graphite pencil. 50 years just for a pencil, that's not so impressive. At least maybe to compensate for that, three years later, bottled beer was invented. And a bit later, a guy called Galileo Galilei came up with a water thermometer. It's all great inventions. I guess you will agree, especially the bottled beer, but it's very unlikely that at that time you would have gone to your boss and would have said, have you heard of Galileo's thermometer? That's such great stuff. So I will now quit my job and I will build a new career based on this new technology. It didn't happen. But then, 200 years ago, this is where we see the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, and suddenly there's electricity and steam-powered machines and all these new inventions coming up, and actually so many inventions that my brain implant isn't working yet, so I have to read it from a paper, just to give you an example. So you were born 200 years ago, and within one lifespan, you would have seen things like the telegraph, the dental chair, there it is again, the telephone, the machine gun, dynamite, an AC motor invented by Tesla, Coca-Cola, and the Macintosh, which was a raincoat. So, lots of new stuff, right? And um, what about us? I mean, isn't this, isn't this dangerous? Because it's hard for us to adapt to those new technologies, but what about the vendors who actually produce them? They don't have the time to invest a lot of time in security, for example, and I don't know if you're aware of that, uh, but yes, I spent some time of my life in the security industry, so um, I could be called professionally paranoid. And when I hear about hacked cars and hacked smart homes, you know, I have the same feelings that you have, so it's not very pleasant. 
And probably you all have heard of things like the iCloud that was hacked with the nude celebrity photos leaked to the internet. Now imagine a room, a house, a city full of cameras and microphones in every corner. Imagine that possibilities. Or do you remember the thing that I mentioned with the natural religions and the spirits? And they're all around you and they're your friends. What if they were not your friends anymore? What if there was a bad guy and then the bad guy hacks the system? So let's say, for example, you're in the bathroom, right? So you're in the bathroom and you're sitting there. And then you hear a voice saying, give me your credit card data. <laughs> and you say, no, of course I won't do that. And then you notice, OK, the door is locked. The window is locked. And then the voice says, well, I just turned on the stove in the kitchen. And I turned off all smoke detectors. And if you don't give me your credit card data, you will burn in your own house. That changes things a bit. And you could also add some crazy household robots just to spice it up a bit. That's pretty scary. So if you heard now this toilet sound, I, I put this in you know, just to cheer you up after all this bad news. The good thing is, though, um, I'm still optimistic. So yes, there are all these risks, but there have been risks in the past. Um, there is a website called planecrashinfo.com, and as you can guess, they're totally focused on plane crashes. And they have a st uh, statistic with plane crashes, um, civil flights, 19 passengers at least. And there you can see that in the 1950s, there were around 25 plane crashes every year. Nowadays, it's maybe around 10, 11-ish. But nowadays, we have way more planes up there in the sky than we had in the 1950s. So obviously, flying has become much more secure. But still, in the 50s, you didn't have to force people to take a flight, right? They would do it voluntarily. And it's the same now with cars. For us, it's totally normal to drive in a car, which, by the way, is more dangerous than a plane. And no matter if you put the flight time uh, into account or, or the, the uh, distance, the plane always wins, the car loses. In 20, 30 years from now, when we all have the automatic driving cars, you know, people will find it insane that we put ourselves and the lives of our loved ones at risk by putting them in a car. So it just needs time. And if we assume that security will be solved out more or less after maybe a painful process, there's still another elephant in the room, and that is the question, what is it actually good for? I mean, I have an Internet of Things stuff, but it's secure, great, but is it useful? And I have to admit, uh, you know, a fridge sending an email, that's not useful, and it's boring. It would be totally different if there was a story like, um, you know, the fridge sees a strange person in the kitchen, and then the fridge talks to the toaster, and the toaster is a good friend of the toaster uh, in another city, and it turns out that toaster knows the guy and says, yes, he robbed our house last week, and then the fridge and the toaster call the police, and the bad guy gets <laughs> captured. So then I would, you know, I would give that fridge and the toaster one week off for that. <laughs> and maybe we will see that. The point is, we cannot imagine yet Think, think back 10 years ago, smartphones. No one wanted to have a smartphone in 2005. You know, yeah, they were sold as powerful devices, not only mobile phones, but you could also browse the internet and send emails. So in principle, the message was, you can do the same stuff that you could do on a PC, just worse. And then Apple came up with the iPhone, and that was just eight years ago. And it changed everything, because for the first time, you had you know, good usability. And throughout the time, also, the mobile internet became affordable. So now you don't have to be a millionaire anymore to be online 24-7. So you can use your smartphone, and you don't freak out because you can send emails, right? You use Uber, Airbnb, Twitter, you know, all these apps that actually work best on a mobile phone. You can also use them on a PC, but the phone, this is where they belong. And it's the same with the Internet of Things. We can now try to you know, take the stuff that we know and project it on the Internet of Things, but in the end, it will be completely different. And especially when we add artificial intelligence, you know, suddenly we don't have individual things, but a global super brain. That will be interesting. So how do we deal with that? 
um, I brought this example with the tsunami at the beginning. Now, if there's a huge wave on the horizon, you can see it, what do you do? You have three options, in my opinion. The first one will be you can just go away. This is what we see today. There are societies who have decided not to live with electricity, for example, and if that's fine for you, so be it. And there's the second one. You could just stand there and ignore it, and you say, it's a hype, and you close your eyes, and then you know, it hits you, and it ends up in a total loss of control. Or you could just go for the third option. If there is a huge wave, you could take a surfboard, and you could try to ride that wave. And you know, probably don't appear to you as a surfing instructor, but this is what I would clearly recommend. Because one problem is there. If, if you think some technology is a hype, or if you think that you already know enough, then you tend to skip things. And skipping technology is like not reading letters. So you get your first letter, and you say, oh, it doesn't look interesting or good, so you put it aside. You get the next one, and after a while, you have a huge stack of invoices and reminders. And now it's really scary. And this is what we can see with the older people. Older people who are not willing to use the computer. You know, for you, it's normal to use a computer. You grew up with them. But for older people, they have this huge stack. And I would guess you don't want to end up in a similar situation, right? So you all know Dracula, Dracula movies, where Dracula finds himself in a, in a modern world. And Dracula is a smart guy, so he has all this wisdom and experience. But then it turns out it's, it's worth nothing. It's still enough to impress some ladies, but it's not good enough to survive in this world. And I guess we should all be very careful that we don't end up as Dracula. So leave your coffin. Stay open-minded. Try new apps. Even if you think you already have all the apps and programs that you need, you know, just try another one. I never wanted to read Harry Potter because everyone was reading it. And then I was forced to read it, and I liked it. So it's all the, uh, the small things that count. So if there is a big wave, once again, grab your surfboard, ride that wave, and the worst thing that will happen is you may get wet, and you may get a sunburn at the beach, but if you're not regular, that will be okay. Thank you.